It's now time for member statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize a new partnership that aims to improve how mental health and addiction services are accessed in my riding of Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. And so last September, a number of local organizations, including Canadian Mental Health Association Grey Bruce, GNB House, Hope Grey Bruce Mental Health and Addiction Services, and Grey Bruce Health Services, have joined to form the new Canadian Mental Health Association Grey Bruce. Under the leadership of Claude Anderson, who has been named Executive Director of the CMHA Grey Bruce, community-based mental health and addiction should become more seamless at a critical time when my constituents are seeking better access to support programs. The CMHA Grey Bruce provides drop-in clinic and support programs for those with mental health need, with locations in Owen Sound, Markdale, Hanover, Southampton, Concordia, and Walkerton. Hope Grey Bruce operates two addiction programs and eight community mental health programs that serve about 2,000 cl clients per year. GNB House is a 15-bed residential treatment supportive housing program in Owen Sound that provides residential support to men who have serious chronic addiction problems. Grey Bruce Health Services has inpatient and outpatient services for adult addictions and mental health, with only outpatient services to come under the umbrella of the new organization. GBHS will also be responsible for the urgent response team and the primary care telemedicine program. As we have the long-standing and growing unmet need in Grey Bruce for mental health and addiction services, the group will continue to advocate for putting mental health addictions on everyone's radar so we can erase the difference and accept that mental health is just as important as physical health and should be funded the same. I welcome Mr. Anderson to the job and look forward to seeing a positive impact and improvement in how my constituents access the often complex mental health and addiction services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members, <coughs> member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. What? Speaker, amidst uh, troubling economic news for the London region, there are encouraging signs of hope because of the commitment and vision of London's outstanding civic entrepreneurs. The 2016 census revealed that London has a lower employment rate than any other large Canadian city. With the collapse of the manufacturing sector and the loss of jobs that never came back, more Londoners than ever before are not participating in the labour market. Those who are are likely to be contract or part-time, and there are more Londoners on Ontario Works today than in the last 15 years. To help spur jobs and opportunity, local civic entrepreneurs are stepping up with new and innovative ideas to drive inclusive social and economic change. For example, social investor Lena Bowden last month launched the Verge Capital Breakthrough Fund, the first regional investment fund of its kind in Ontario. The fund enables private investors to support social enterprises that benefit the community, such as affordable housing developments or environmental projects. And earlier this month, Venture London was announced, a one-stop shop for entrepreneurs and the largest entrepreneur centre in southwestern Ontario. Led by civic entrepreneur Amar Ferrari, Venture London is a collaboration between Tech Alliance, the London Small Business Centre, the London Institute and Fari Holdings. Mr. Speaker, London civic entrepreneurs are doing their part to foster growth and prosperity that is shared by all Londoners. We need a government equally committed to rebuilding an inclusive local economy. Thank you. Thank you. The member member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm thrilled to rise today and to speak to an exciting event that is taking place this evening. We are joined by the United Way service providers and advocates from across the province who are here for Youth Homelessness Awareness Day. Please note that the reception will take place this evening in between 5 and 7 o'clock in the Legislative Dining Room. I'd like to acknowledge the tremendous efforts of Pavna Varma, Kim Hockey, and their team at the United Way Kingston Frontenac, Lennox and Addington, and fellow United Way organizations from across the province. Mr. Speaker, it is heartbreaking to know that there are young people who are struggling to have their most basic needs met. We need to do everything we can to rectify this situation and ensure that every youth lives a fair and equitable life. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud that our government is investing $50 million over six years through the Local Poverty Reduction Fund. Ontario is providing more than $16 million to 46 projects in communities across Ontario, and almost $3 million of the over $16 million is supporting projects related to homelessness. Ontario is investing $17 billion over four years to deliver more accessible and better care for individuals who experience mental illness or addiction at any stage in life, and this will also help. 
Mr. Speaker, we know that there is more work to be done, and I would encourage everyone in this House, all members of all parties, to please join us for this celebration this evening. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statement, the member from Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. I rise today to acknowledge Purple Day. Here, here. Founded in 2008, Purple Day was created by Cassidy oh. Megan, who was motivated by her own struggles with epilepsy. Through increased awareness, Purple Day dispels myths around an epilepsy, reduces stigma, and empowers individuals living with epilepsy to take action in their communities. There are approximately 50 million people around the world living with epilepsy, including roughly 90,000 people here in Ontario. There remains no cure for this complex neurological disorder. However, proper treatment and medication can contro help control seizures, resulting in people living their lives to their fullest. Advances in medical technologies give us hope for a possible better treatments or perhaps a cure down the road. I would encourage everyone involved to get in, to learn more about epilepsy and learn about this important cause. Spread awareness, educate yourself, educate others, and help eliminate many misconceptions related to epilepsy. Together, we can make a difference in many, many lives. I'd like to thank Epilepsy Ontario for the great work they do across Ontario to improve the lives of people living with epilepsy. Well done. Thank you for your member's statement. The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this afternoon I'll be introducing my bill, Liability for Climate Related Harms Act 2018. Increasingly, the cost of climate damage will be a burden on our society and on individuals. This act will give Ontarians the legal means to seek compensation from the world's major polluters for their fair share of these costs. In this, it follows the path of the tobacco liability legislation brought forward here in Ontario to recover compensation for health costs related to tobacco use. The world's largest fossil fuel corporations have to start paying their fair share for the damage from their products and for the cost of protecting people from those damages. No one has calculated the cost of climate damage to Ontario to date, but as a sense of the scale, Storm damage in Ontario in 2013 alone exceeded $1 billion between the summer flash flooding in July and the ice storm in December. The cost to protect us in the future is undetermined. To give a sense of scale, New York City, in its climate lawsuit, noted that it will be spending $20 billion to protect that city from future climate damage and is seeking commensurate compensation. Speaker. The damage from climate change, the cost to protect us from climate change will be huge. The people of this province need the companies that are putting out the product causing the problem to put in their fair share. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the member's statement. The member from Eglinton Lawrence. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, sad to say that uh, earlier this month I had another senseless uh, shooting uh, which killed two people outside my local bowling alley on a Saturday night. This is a bowling alley that I go to, I take my grandkids to. A lot of people, you know, go for pizza and bowling on a Saturday night. Well, these innocent uh, people were shot and killed on a Saturday night. Could have been anybody in the community. Could have been anybody. And I know this past weekend we've seen in the United States there was March for Our Lives, where young people stood up and spoke out about the census killing in Florida. But, you know, we have issues here in Ontario, in Canada, and these are not from legitimate gun owners. These are criminals. These are thugs that have unlawful handguns, and they're driving around, walking around our city with unlawful handguns. What are you doing with a handgun in the city? If you're not a policeman, military person, a licensed uh, target shooter, what right do you have to have an unlawful handgun in the city, in Brantford, in uh, Brampton, in Toronto? They're doing that because they flaunt the law, they get away with it, and that's why every day almost there's some kind of gunplay and they walk away. This has got to stop, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to highlight the serious issues plaguing home care in my riding, particularly in the district of Perry Sound. Since the local care contract was renegotiated and the government awarded the deal to a new care provider, I've heard over and over again from constituents in desperate need of care. 
I've heard from people who are being sent home from the hospital with no supports in place. I've heard from individuals who are already accessing home care, but since the change in providers are now getting spotty, disorganized care if they receive care at all. I've also heard from individuals who are told there are no personal support workers available and who weren't even being offered the option of being put on a wait list. Upon complaining, all these constituents are told by the care provider that, that there's a lack of PSWs in the area. However, I've also heard from PSWs who have taken jobs in other fields because of the lack of compensation for travel time made continuing in their chosen profession impossible. This is a clear case of the government thinking one model will work for the entire province. I would, however, point out that while a PSW in an urban area could spend the entire day treating patients within a few city blocks, a PSW in the north might have to travel three hours in a day to reach all their patients, and as of now, those three hours are unpaid. My constituents have made it clear to me that they are angry with this government's choice uh, to contract a company that cannot provide services that were previously provided under another service provider and who seemingly do not have the staff for the job that they Thank bid you. on. Thank you very yeah, yeah. much, Mr. Speaker. Further members, a statement the member from Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to acknowledge that throughout the month of March, Ontario has been proudly celebrating Bangladeshi Heritage Month. Back in 2016, I brought forward Bill 44, an act to proclaim March as Bangladeshi Heritage Month in Ontario. And I'm happy to see that this province continues to recognize the numerous contributions made by our Bangladeshi community members and celebrate the lasting impact they've made on this province. Bangladeshi immigrants have been coming to Canada and proudly calling Ontario home, Mr. Speaker, since the early 1970s. And today, community estimates put their numbers at around 50,000. There are friends, our neighbours, our artists, our scientists, our doctors, our business owners, and community leaders. Their infusion of culture, of shared values, and incredible work ethic has significantly strengthened my riding of Scarborough Southwest and truly made it more unique and special in the community in which we live. On top of that today, this day also marks a uh, celebration in the Bangladeshi cal calendar as it is an independence day, so the timing of these remarks could not be more fitting. Finally, I'd like to mention that on Wednesday the 28th, we'll be holding a flag-raising ceremony here at Queen's Park. I encourage all members to attend. I look forward to celebrating with them and with members from the Bangladeshi community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements? Further members' statements? There being none, it is therefore time for reports by committees.